Hello, hello. Uh, uh, I'm just checking. So, do you guys hear? Is, is it loud? I, I'm already loud. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, yeah, you have a question? Uh -huh. Oh, no, no, that's fine. You did a very good job. Like, I'll collect them, and I'll put finally in those mailboxes. Thank you. OK. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I was uh, adjusting this uh, <coughs> um, uh, screen, and it took a little bit of time. So I'm Rudra Kafle. I'm uh, Your professor is out for today, and so I'm substituting for him. Uh, hope that I'll do a good job. In an hour, I don't know. Uh, I see some known faces here, like um, uh, whom I taught before in physics uh, one, physics two, I guess. Okay. Yep. So uh, we are. Uh, uh, I speak a little bit faster, so but I, I try to slow down so so that uh, because it is a huge class, uh, so I try to adjust my voice. Um, we are uh, learning oscillations and waves in this course, and pro probably Professor Kashuri already told you about that, right? Uh, and you did a little bit maths, which is required, uh, like uh, which helps you to solve the problems in this course in the previous class. Today, I'm going to talk about some, let's say, um, some oscillations, uh, how to treat oscillations mathematically, okay? And uh, some of you guys will be seeing me in the lab, Physics 1140 lab, if you belong to Section 4 and Section 5, OK? So this is the only class today I'm here. Uh, from Friday, Professor Karshari will be back here, OK? So let's uh, quickly see a couple of oscillations examples in YouTube, probably you already saw. See, oscillations uh, are really important, and they are ubiquitous. That means they are everywhere. Our heartbeat is, uh, if norm, uh, a normal adult human heart beats uh, like 70 to 80 minutes, uh, 80 times per minute, it, right? That is oscillation. Our lungs do contraction and expansion. That is a kind of uh, oscillation. Uh, music, without oscillation, that doesn't happen, right? And a uh, 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 quantum guy, okay, his name is Quantum Buffin. I don't know what does that mean, uh, but it means maybe quantum expert. I don't know. He has created some oscillations in the lab. I'm not showing this all eight minutes video, but I'm just, so this is one kind of oscillation, which is most of the time we will be seeing this oscillation in the lab. There are 10 labs starting from uh, tomorrow, okay, in the course. So most of the time we will be seeing this kind of oscillation. And he has created a, a faster oscillation. And he has created slightly different kind of oscillation, like that. OK. And he has created slightly different kind of oscillation there. Right. And he has created slightly different kind of oscillation there. And he has created a different kind of oscillation there. OK. And he has another kind of oscillation there, OK? And there is another kind of oscillation there, right? And there is this electrical oscillation there. Something is oscillating there in the box, you see? Moving coil uh, 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 is uh, a kind of galvanometer, OK? And there is another kind of oscillation there, uh, sl slightly dying. Let's try from here, OK? So this is a kind of oscillation. And there is another, uh, I think that's the, yeah, this is nice. Uh, I really like this, uh, this one, OK? So the fluid is oscillating in the tube. And there is another oscillation. So these are different kind of oscillations which are created in the lab. We won't see all those oscillations, but you may see problems of this kind uh, in your math. That means uh, homework problems, OK? So these are uh, different kind of oscillations which are created in the lab. But there are other kinds of oscillations, too, uh, which occur naturally. For example, one of the oscillation which was really disastrous was this. 
one of the oscillation which was really disastrous and that happened in that actually collapsed the bridge newly built bridge before opening in california okay so see this is a let me uh, pull slide there like see 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 a wild oscillation is happening there there is a car there and then somewhere around there there is a reporter there so like so oscillations are good we see i am speaking to you my vocal cord is vibrating at certain frequency there is oscillation there right but os oscillations natural oscillation these are uh, this kind of oscillations are disastrous too earthquake creates oscillation on the earth itself right so all these uh, oscillations and there is another oscillation there so you can watch this i am just giving a uh, quick flash and there is another oscillation here like which is uh, created by some guy and it is really nice i like this yeah so i like the phenomena i am not like i am not telling you that i like breaking of the glass but this guy does breaking of the glass by supersonic see now the glass uh, he has coupled with some vibrator there and the glass is oscillating and it starts oscillating uh, means the amplitude becomes more and more and more finally something happens there let's wait for maybe a half minute yeah so see uh, like there are all kinds of oscillations like this kind of oscillation is what we call resonance and you are learning that uh, in this course okay so these are some examples of uh, uh, resonance uh, i mean oscillations now what we are going to do today is uh, some uh, mathematics of these oscillations we start okay we start and then that will go uh, throughout the course seven weeks uh, term okay so uh probably you already uh professor kasuri already told you about phasers right so that's uh, that's available in the course web page so please look at there now uh let me pull this a simple yeah so like uh we will be dealing with the first kind of oscillation for a long time in this course like maybe uh in the lab most almost all of the labs are related to this phenomena okay the simplest oscillating system is spring mass system for obvious reason there is a spring a mass is attached either it is on the horizontal table or it is uh supported vertically right here like the vertical uh, spring mass system most of the time we are we are doing lab Uh, the vertical uh, spring mass system there okay so a simple pendulum and a quartz crystal so these are some oscillating system in here okay for uh, an atomic clock where atoms vibrate there okay so uh, the frequency of atoms are considered there, right so that in the atomic clock and uh, so uh so this is like the vertical oscillating mass spring system right i pull it down and release it so what happens is like the spring mass system oscillates up and down right and what is done here okay what is done here is there is a pen there okay there is a pen there and then there is a white sheet of paper and which moves then uh like you, we will see we will see this kind of pattern this kind of pattern uh after some time right so this is what we call sinusoidal oscillation okay or you can say cosinusoidal uh, they are like sin and cosine are complementary to each other okay so <clears throat> so now let me go back and uh, uh to this smart screen and write something now uh, what is happening there can be represented by a rotating vector model can be explained uh, by a rotating vector model what what does that mean is like i have 
let us say uh, uh, I am not so much familiar with this, maybe like this, oh yeah, okay. Uh, I want it a uh, circle actually, uh, that did not give me a circle. Make a circle like this, okay, ah, that works right, okay. So, what happens here is like, uh, so uh, you already uh, learned about phaser, right? You already already learned about phaser. What is a phaser? A phaser is a, a phaser is a rotating vector, which represents any oscillation. That is a phaser. Okay, and the phaser in general is represented by G is equal to. Let me use the symbol which is used by uh, Professor Kasuri J. Uh, maybe theta, something like this, right? Okay. So G is the phasor, right? Where R is what we call amplitude, okay? And theta is the phase angle, okay? And uh, probably you already know uh, it can be expanded uh, by using Weyler formula, right? What is that? The R is R there, so it can be expanded as this: cosine of theta plus J sine of theta, okay, like this. So, e to the power z theta can be expanded this way, okay. And by the way, what is j? Here, j is equal to square root of minus 1, right. So, here, this is the real axis x and this imaginary axis y. That means, j goes on the y axis, okay. Now, uh, if you look at here, now in the first term, right, so let me expand this in one more line, r cosine theta plus j r sine theta, okay, like this. So in the first term, in this expansion in the first term, there is no j. So this is what we call real part of the phasor. This is what we call real part of the phasor. And in the second term, there is r sine theta, right? In this term, there is j, right? And this is what we call the imaginary part, the imaginary part of the phasor g, right? So why I am bringing this is, so like, so let me draw this, uh, something like this. You already, uh, this is a kind of preview. So this is g, right? And then this is theta. What are they? These are they. Right now, uh, we come back to this slide again when we we add two or more than two vibrations. Okay, so let me introduce vibration, which I uh, uh, like gave examples before. So let me uh, file. Uh, I think new. Okay, uh, I think I need to save it. I want to save it. File. Save on the desktop. Let me do it. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So now, now let's consider a simple uh, spring mass system. Okay, and, and then we'll come back to that uh, 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 review. Okay, simple spring mass system. Uh, probably uh, black is better. Let me use black. Okay. So there is a mass there. Connected with a spring, okay, like this. This is mass m, okay. So, what do I do? Is I pull it uh, by a distance x, okay, and release it. So, what does it do uh, about its mean position? Okay, it is on stress position x equal to zero. I pull it and then release it, okay. So, uh, it oscillates in time, okay, it, it moves forward and backward. So here, x is what we call displacement, okay, displacement of this mass. Uh, and I wrote x of t. So you guys already know about this. If not, let me explain. That means x is function of time. x changes with time, okay, at t equal to zero. Uh, like. 
uh, if I, uh, I uh, um, consider like the maximum position, like I, uh, I pull it on one side to some extreme position and then release, so at x equal to zero, it is the maximum displacement. Okay, so uh, this is uh, given by this is given by uh, some amplitude. Uh, let me write a, okay, cosine omega t plus pi. Okay, oh, this is omega, uh, and uh, so and if you now uh, call the phasor. If you now recall the phasor, then this is what? This is real part of real part of A E J omega T plus pi. You agree with me? Do you agree with me? How do I expand A uh, A J uh, e to the power J cos uh, J omega T plus pi by Euler formula that is cosine uh, cosine of the argument om omega t plus phi plus j sine omega t plus phi, right? But here I am I am uh, I have only real part a times cosine of omega t plus phi, so this is real part of the phasor. Okay. Now here, wh why can I do uh, why can I do that? So, like, let me uh, let me show you a quick. Uh, okay, let me draw here. Uh, why can I do that? I draw. I try to draw a better circle now. Oh. Okay, that's fine. Okay, it works. <laughs> now, now here, this is my phaser. Okay, let me call G. Uh, I better write. Uh, I don't know how to. Uh, deal with that. I'm not so much experienced in this writing. Okay, so so this is theta. Okay, so this is the real axis x and y. Now let me project this point to the uh, real axis. Okay, this is r, or you can call a r. Uh, R or in, in this in this notation there is a so let me write a by the way okay now what happens here when this uh, uh, point let's say it it um, uh, moves around the circle with certain frequency okay uh, here uh, I haven't explained these terms but uh, I'll, I'll explain in a minute uh, when it moves around the circle then the projection just moves back and forth right the projection simply moves back and forth like this like this it uh, so this point goes there 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 and then the, this projection moves towards the center and goes to the other end and then here it is uh, it is now uh, zero and then comes back to this point okay this uh, projection moves back and forth and from uh, trigonometry from this using this triangle i can write that uh, this uh, this projection is this projection is what? Uh, a cosine theta, right? This is a cosine theta. But if I take some initial uh, uh, value of, oh, oops, sorry, uh, what did I do? Oh, see, discovery by chance. Uh, so I, probably my uh, unknowingly I hit enter and then I got new phase. Nice. Okay. So here, so what? Uh, so. Like if I take uh, some initial uh, theta and then uh, consider this rotation with omega t, so then I get instead of theta, I get the argument omega t plus theta or omega t plus uh, phi, since I have written there phi. So my point here is this. My point here is this. The projection of if a particle is doing, let's say, uh, uh, circular motion, uniform circular motion, then the projection of that vector, that means this uh, phasor on the real axis, on the real axis, that is in, in our case x-axis, gives the displacement, right? And which is basically uh, omega t plus uh, th uh, phi, okay? 
So this, now let me explain uh, what are these, uh, uh, these uh, different terms. A here is what we call amplitude. That is the maximum displacement, right? Now, if I draw this projection, this will look like this. Uh, this will look like this. If I draw it with time, if I draw projection, uh, like the, this is, uh, the, uh, with time, then this will look like this, OK? So here it is uh, instrument doing that. And I can, I can um, do that for a number of points, OK? So now, so here, a is the now so this can be the the projection can be I think this one yeah so that I can write the displacement with time this way x as t as a function of t this way right and then this will go like this okay so a is the maximum displacement this is a and which we call amplitude by the way uh, if the uh, if the oscillation is not decaying uh, uh, let me that means if the oscillation remains the same forever so this a uh, up there uh, and down there will be same in magnitude right so uh, when we call amplitude we always take positive value okay but like uh, uh, since the displacement is a vector quantity, like below the be below this zero line, uh, it is negative, right? But whenever we define a or amplitude, amplitude is the maximum displacement of a maximum displacement of a particle, oscillating particle from the mean position, undisturbed position. Okay, so that is amplitude. So what is the unit of amplitude? Now see, a is amplitude and cosine of uh, this argument, what is the uh, what is the unit of cosine of some argument? What is the dimension of this? It is dimensionless. Good job. Yes, cosine and exponential and logarithms have arguments, right? And uh, these quantities, uh, the arguments, uh, this these quantities are dimensionless. Log log of theta or exponential theta or cosine of theta, they are dimensionless. So cosine of Oh, this argument uh, is dimensionless. So, but x is the displacement in SI unit. We measure displacement in meters, right? In meters. So, what should be the unit of a? That should be meters. If x is uh, if x is in meters, uh, so a should be in meters. If x, like, you can measure in centimeters, millimeters, but I'm I'm just telling you the SI unit, right? So what uh, now? What is the unit of this? Uh, so a is the amplitude. I define that. X is displacement. Uh, that means the distance of the particle from the mean position in either side, right? Uh, if it is like, uh, from, let's say, it, uh, uh, if I, we are considering right to be positive, so the displacement is positive. In the left, it is negative from the origin. Okay, from the uh, initial point. Now. Um, uh, now we have omega t here, omega t right there, omega. So what is this? Uh, what is the uh, what is the unit of this omega times t? That that should be see. I, I'm adding omega times t uh, with some quantity called phi. That is an angle phi. Okay, initial angle. That is this angle there. Okay. Uh, and so the, the product of omega times t should give me the same unit as phi. Phi is in radian, so omega times 2 should be in radian. And time is in seconds, so omega should be 1 over second, right? But in general, we write radian per second, right? So omega is angular frequency, OK? And it is radian per second. And time, the unit of time is second. These are the units, OK? Units are important. Please do not miss the units. OK? And phi is in radian. Phi is radian. OK? That is in radian. OK? Now, what is this phi called? This phi is the, the initial angle or initial phase. OK? So what is that? This is somewhat uh, difficult quantity. So let me draw that picture again. OK? So, uh, 
So now I'm showing uh, the full form, like this is my phi, and I started from here. Let's say the particle started from there. This is x, this is y, and uh, this is omega t, okay? So now the, this uh, is x of t, the displacement is written as x t is equal to uh, the amplitude a, or we have written r, r, Oh, I'm, I think I'm mixing two kinds of symbols. Okay, R cosine omega t plus phi. Okay, so this is uh, this is the uh, this is the displacement. Now, what phi is? So, like this picture makes clear uh, what is phi than the previous picture. Like uh, I did not uh, uh, write omega t. I did not show omega t there. So here. Uh, phi is the initial phase. That means the particle started oscillating not from uh, here, but from certain angle, certain distance away from the uh, mean position. Okay, and omega t uh, is now when t equal to zero, so that shows the initial position of the particle. Okay, so uh, this uh, and this angle is really important. This phase is uh, really important. Let me show you some. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back uh, when uh, I do phase addition later. Uh, I mean the uh, uh, addition of the uh, vibrations later. So this is the position. Okay. Now, if I uh, if I take the derivative of this quantity, displacement x is displacement. If I take the derivative of this quantity with respect to time, that is what I mean is this dx over dt. Okay, so from physics one, you are you are already familiar with this. This is what we call velocity, right? That is the velocity, and uh, since I'm considering one dimension, I'm not writing vector uh, here. So dx over dt, and by the way, uh, I got uh, notes from Professor Kasuri. He will post this later uh, when he comes back. So he has written x prime in his note. Uh, if you see the books, books usually write dot, x dot, or x prime, or x prime, depending upon the uh, like books, the notation may be slightly different. Okay, so x dot is a function of t, is dx over dt. Okay, so here r is constant, right? Here r is constant. So what is the derivative of cosine? That is sine, right? That is sine, but cosine is uh, uh, the uh, the derivative of cosine also gives you negative sign, right? So that is minus r. Not only that, the cosine has argument omega t plus phi. We are taking the derivative with respect to t, and t has the coefficient omega. So that omega also comes in the front, right? So omega also comes in the front. So omega r sine omega t plus phi. So this quantity is what we call the velocity. Okay, This quantity is called the velocity. Uh, let me write neatly, minus omega r sine omega t plus phi. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is what we call the velocity. And uh, Again, sine sine uh, does not have any dimension. It has no unit. Sine of theta or sine of omega t plus phi. So this omega r, this omega r should have unit of what? Unit of velocity, right? Good. Okay. Now you can check that. By the way, r is the uh, maximum displacement, which is amplitude, and r is in meters, and uh, Omega is radian per second, but in general we don't write meter radian per second. We just simply write meter per second. Okay, so that's the unit of velocity. Okay, uh, I don't know from uh, how did I there is okay uh, maybe enter no I don't know how did I get there. Uh, I add with this. Oh yeah yes good okay yeah good job now. Now, uh, now let's take the derivative of this uh, quantity again. Okay, let's take the derivative of this quantity again. That is, 
I have V of t, which is x dot t is equal to minus omega r, right? Sine omega t plus phi. Okay. Let me take the derivative of this quantity again, which is x dot dot t. Okay. Okay. And this quantity now again, what is the derivative of, of sine with respect to t? Sine of t omega t plus phi. That is cosine, right? So, and omega again, I uh, a factor of omega comes out, so it is omega square r cosine omega t plus phi. Okay. So this quantity, which is basically, I'm taking the derivative of v. I'm taking the derivative of v, so that is v dot, v dot t, and what is this? Nice, good job. So that is acceleration. You guys are really smart, right? So acceleration, which is the second derivative of displacement, right? Now let's do some uh, little trick to make this uh, a standard in a standard form, which uh, most of the physics book write. What is r cosine omega t plus phi? Let's go back there. What is r cosine omega t plus phi? That is x, right? Right. So if I uh, if I replace this with x of t minus omega square x of t. So this is a very very important equation in physics. This is a differential equation. If you have already taken differential equation, we can also write this this way: d to x over d t square plus omega square x equal to zero. Right? Can we write this way? Yes, obviously. Right? So this differential equation is the uh, equation of simple harmonic motion. Okay, and this shows two very important things. One is, one is acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement. For a given constant omega, right, the more x, the more acceleration. The less x, the less acceleration. Suppose I have a, the, that my uh, previous uh, system I showed you, the spring mass system, right? Can you please tell me what is the maximum acceleration he, uh, in that case? When x is how much? When x is how much, a will be maximum. That is amplitude, right? Amplitude is the maximum displacement from the mean position, from the central position. What is the acceleration of spring mass system at mean position? If mean position x equal to 0, the object is not accelerating at all, right? So this is one, and the other is uh, this negative sign shows that a is directed towards the mean position, towards the mean position. So these two important points. Okay. So let me write something like. Um, Conclusions. Conclusions on this, okay? Are directed towards the mean position. Okay? Now, uh, so you, you are going to observe this thing in, you are going to do these things, you are going to calculate these things in, uh, practically in the lab using this uh, simple spring mass system. Okay? Uh, um, maybe next week. Uh, maybe next week, yeah. Okay. So now uh, let me ask a quick question. Uh, I I multiply this boxed equation by mass on both sides, right? What is the left hand side? That is force, right? M times a Newton second law, right? So the force is given by minus m omega square x t. So instead of acceleration, I can also write Instead of acceleration, I can also write force that restores, that brings the object back to the original position is 
uh, is um, proportional to the displacement and is directed towards the uh, mean position. Okay? And by the way, uh, you can also check dimensionally, like omega square as unit of radian per second square, uh, and x as meter. So the unit is meter per second square. We don't write, I already told you, we don't write meter radian square per second square. Okay, that's the acceleration. Okay, now uh, the one of the important thing I would like to do. Uh, let me um, uh, slightly digress and then uh, tell you about uh, by addition of vibration because that's the part of your uh, homework too. Okay. Okay. Let me quickly. Uh, how do I add vibrations? Okay. Suppose I want to add. Uh, like, uh, if you add uh, two or more vibrations, like uh, you sometimes you can you will be able to see new phenomena. For example, like you know music, like in music there like uh, there are multiple uh, components there. Like uh, the music uh, signal is really complicated, but it can be split into number of components, right? Um, you might have heard beats if you are a musician. I'm not a musician, but beats two frequencies, two vibrations of slightly different frequencies which are traveling in the same direction produce bits. If there are two oscillations uh, which are uh, uh, superposing each other from opposite direction, they produce standing waves. So uh, addition of vibration is really important. So let's, uh, let me do one, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I think I keep up saving. Uh, This way. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so suppose I have two vibrations. Okay, one is uh, one is something like let's say x one. Okay. So uh, I have uh, one vibration which is x one which is as a function of time, and this is something like uh, seven cosine of omega t, okay? And I have another vibration, which is x2, and this is six cosine omega t plus pi over three. So I have two vibrations, I have two oscillations. One is given by the first equation, right? Equation, the vibration one, and the vibration two, or the oscillation two is given by the second equation. That is, what are x1 and x2? They are displacements, right? They, they are displacement, they are in uh, displacement of the particle uh, or object which is oscillating with frequency omega, okay? And what is the initial phase for the first oscillation? How much? We have, we have that standard equation. Again, let me recall the standard equation. That is x equal to r or a. Uh, I'm uh, using this symbol uh, interchangeably. Uh, please, uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, please don't confuse. Cos cosine omega t plus phi. So this is the standard equation right, for the dis standard displacement. So for the first one, r is 7, right? Uh, I haven't uh, written any units here. Uh, let's consider they are in SI units, meters, OK? So r is uh, 7 meters, and the second one is r is 6 meters. And the four, uh, omegas are, uh, uh, you can take any uh, frequency there. Uh, uh, and um, phi uh, for the first one is 0. Right, and the, for the second one is pi is pi over three, right? Uh, by the way, uh, uh, yeah, I, mean, I want to add these two, but before that, let me quickly uh, introduce some terms. Omega is what we call angular frequency, right? So angular frequency is related to the uh, time period of oscillation by uh, that relation. Uh, what is time period? That is, the time period is the time for one complete oscillation, OK? Uh, and and uh, 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 other quantity we uh, frequently uh, 
fine in our problems is simply frequency, right? And that is one over t. And you can you can uh, comp uh, you can uh, find the relation between omega and f from these two. Omega is two pi times f, okay? And uh, f is in hertz, h e r t z, and denoted by big H and little g, okay? Z z, okay? So how do I how do I add these two uh, uh, two vibrations? I want to add these two vibrations. That is part of your homework. There are three questions, and then you will uh, you are asked to add those and find the standard form, something like uh, given in the box. Okay. So how do I do that? So what do I do is I represent the these uh, oscillations by phasor, by these these real vibrations by phasor. Okay, how do I do that? So my x1, my x1 is the uh, x1. Let, let me write uh, my x1 is real of real part of let's say um, seven uh, yeah seven e j omega t plus zero. Right, and x two the same way I can write real part of six e j omega t plus pi over three. So here, uh, so x one is uh, x one is r cosine omega t seven cosine omega t x two is six cosine omega t plus pi over three. These are the real parts of the phasor. Uh, let's say. Now G1 and G2, where G1 is the 7 e j omega t plus 0, and x2 is that, right? So what do I do is, uh, let me uh, call this G1. G1 is 7 e j omega t plus 0. And then I can expand this, OK? Uh, uh, it. Uh, Okay, uh, and G two equal to this is G two is equal to six e j omega t plus pi over three. So the procedure is this: the procedure is uh, take G one and G two at zero time. So at zero time, G one and G two are function of time. So G one equal to zero. What's this? G seven, right? Uh, Plus seven, and uh, what is the j component? Cosine zero is one, right? Sine zero is zero, right? So that is zero. In uh, j zero, let me write that. And g two zero is uh, t zero. So like, uh, just expand that, and then multiply by six. You will get six cosine pi over three plus j6 sine pi over 3. Now I can simply add them as a vector, right? The components, like the real part, cosine pi over 3. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 degrees is a half. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. And I simply add them. I simply add them. OK? I simply add them. And then I get. Uh, like I get the sum, I get the sum. Like please do the uh, see, uh, just uh, plug those numbers in your calculator and show this. Then, then you will get the numbers, right? So the numbers are I'm copying from my note here. The numbers are something like this. Z, uh, the g sum I'm adding at zero time is equal to I got this ten point zero plus 5.196j. OK? So I got that. This is, uh, this is j, by the way, not j, not j hat. OK? So, uh, so how, how, do I, how do you find the absolute value of, of, uh, of a phasor? Square the real component, square the imaginary component, add them, take the square root. Right? So the magnitude is this. So the magnitude. Uh, so if you do that, then you can get the magnitude as 11.3. And then how do you find the argument? 
just uh, imaginary component divided by real component arc tangent, right? You, you guys already did that, right? Good job. OK. So then what you get is this, E j j 0 0.479. OK, that's what you get. How did I get that? How did I get that? I squared 10 and squared the coefficient of j, which is imaginary component, and I added them, take the square root, right? Uh, and then that is my 11.3. And I divided the 5.196, which is uh, imaginary component, divide by real component, which is 10, and I took the arc tangent. Right? That is my uh, uh, angle in radian. Okay. Once I do that, so I I got g at zero. Right? So how do I get g sum? This is, by the way, sum. So how do I get g? Uh, I mean, uh, how do I get the uh, the real uh, the sum x? I just copy this and multiply by the time part, which I have left. OK, what do I do is like my uh, amplitude 11.3, right? And cosine of omega t, which is the time part I, I left, plus 0 0.479. So this is the sum. So this helps you to solve the problems in your homework too. OK? Good job. Do you have any questions? Thank you so much. Uh, from the next class, Professor Kasuri will be here. No, I'm, not, I'm not. I will be seeing you, some of you, in the lab. Thank you. Thank you so much. This, this is my this is my first experience in. I know. Yeah. Uh, so it turns out it's much easier to write. If you mm. it's, it's here. If you oh yeah. Just yeah. kind of make it more level because otherwise you. Have to yeah, <laughs> I, I never used this before. This is the first time. So you have a question? Yes. Yeah, um, so the magnitude of the the sum the x sum function over time uh -huh. is the amplitude of. The, um, so, the, uh, the x at zero, right? I'm trying to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That doesn't yeah, change. Well, only what changes? Like you simply, finally, you multiply by. Finally, you multiply by this omega t. Otherwise, this, this will not change. Never change. Mm -hmm. Okay. But how do we know that's eleven point three? Oh, square this, square this, add them, and take the square root. But so that's the time. That's the summation of x one and x two at zero, right? At time zero, right? Uh, uh, no, uh, no. Like you can, you cannot simply add the. Uh, sim you cannot simply add x one and x two, mm -hmm. right? Uh, th this is the way uh, we add pagers. Yeah. Right. So what we are doing is, what we are doing is, oh, probably there is class there. Uh, probably. Uh, so what we are doing is we are converting, converting uh, these uh, uh, complex num uh, like real numbers into mm -hmm. complex. Yeah. Right. And then we are adding pagers. Right. Okay. So this is. So we have to add the real parts and then the imaginary. Yeah, that's true. I added this and I added this. See, I added j and j, mm -hmm. the coefficient of j. So that's z z sum at time zero. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's so true. So then we take the amplitude of that and that's the amplitude for, for x of for all time. For all time. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sir, you have a question. Uh, yeah. Sir, you have a question. Sorry, can you just go back to the previous slide for a second? Oh yeah, please. Here. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, those are like the real part of uh, the real part of any phaser is simply the displacement, yeah. right? So my displacement were like uh, my displacement were see th this one, right? So this is what this is there. This is like we know that x t is r cosine omega t plus phi, which is the real part of a phaser, yeah. right? In that real part of the phaser. Uh, so I I, I I wrote that in the form of phaser. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. okay? Yeah. Okay. But then. Uh, mm -hmm. From here? Yeah. Oh, there. So see, I wrote t equal to zero. Oh no, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah.